I can still catch. You don't lose your hands. You lose your, your will to play and your speed. But your hands will always be there. Drill the right way. Four. Ah. Ah. That was good. That was good effort. That's though. okay. Good try. Look at how much easier it is. I can't wait. Ah, let's go! Sign me up! Here we go, here we go, here we go. You guys loose, Alex, and you throw? Yeah. Throw a little bit, or are you loose? You are loose? I'm good. You are, you're confusing. It may be John Budmeyer's first season as Wisconsin's quarterbacks coach, and Alex Hornibrook's third year as the Badgers starter, but the pair's relationship started even before they were together in Madison. Alex, you're going, you're dropping, and you're gonna be here, pump, and then right back to it. While with Paul Christ at the University of Pittsburgh, Bud Meyer played a key role recruiting the promising prep from Westchester, Pennsylvania. Yeah, I've been around him a long time. I don't know how many years it's been exactly, but it's been a while, so uh, we're pretty close. There's, there's a great amount of trust between the two of us. Alex and I spent a ton of time together, and uh, I think both of us have an appreciation for how the other works and how the other prepares, and that preparation allows you to trust the other one. Right, Alex, let's get a uh, buzz it here. All right, buzz it. There you go. Good. That feel all right? All right. Big thing on this one is just we're reversing out, but our steps don't change. Okay, to that strong hand. Off the midline. Yeah, two less, right? Take another one here. Take another one. Ready to go. Two years ago, Hornybrook split the starter's workload with Bart Houston, and last year entered the season knowing that he was the guy. This year, coming off an MVP performance in the Orange Bowl, Everybody is feeling, well, you know. He, he wants to be the best quarterback in the country, and he's going to do everything that it takes to get there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, eight-man drop. So that tells us what, Alex, for timing? Either hitting it quick or later. Perfect. Here we go. He has a great football mind, and his ability to not only see things while playing the game, but also see things in the film room and add value to meetings with his ideas. And uh, that along with his ability to just stay in the moment and play the game, I think those are his biggest strengths and what make him a great quarterback. But when we do that, that doesn't do anything. A DB's looking at that. So Alex made the point earlier, it doesn't have to be that drastic here with it, just hands apart and then I'm coming right back to it. To be comfortable, I think you just have to uh, understand what you're doing, be comfortable with yourself and then everybody around you. And um, once you have that, there's nothing you should be worried about when you're on the field. Boy, he done, he done developed, yo. Three by one, three by one, two by two. He's seeing one half of it. Ten yards, ten yards. He, he's, he's understanding our coverages. He's kind of picking apart our disguises a little bit. So I get a little frustrated trying to, you know, manipulate him. But I'm happy. If he can do it to me, I'm confident. Uh, you know, he could do it to a lot of guys, you know, we'll, we'll eventually face. One, seven, go. Dakota Dixon has lined up across from Hornybrook thousands of times in practice. That's just some of the experience that has Dixon well prepared to lead a young Wisconsin secondary. Not everyone is the same. Not everyone is built the same. You know, so it's very important that you can meet people where they are. When I first came in and I saw Mike Caputo and I saw what he was doing, I saw the standard he set, the example he was, and so I kind of followed him. And so that, that, that's the biggest thing, you know, just being an example. There's a standard, you know, so I got to make sure that standard always stays. So where are the young guys in reaching that standard? Well, redshirt freshman Scott Nelson is practically in the same place Dixon found himself four years ago. Young and inexperienced, but motivated to define his role. Hey. I see you not. I got a book today, he's feeling saucy. <laughs> Reminds me of myself when I was younger. He, he's hungry, you know, he thought he really wants it. Go. My dad always told me like, go in, be a sponge, just absorb everything. And so 
I was trying to be around him and Coach Leonard as much as possible just because if I was going to play, I wanted to be around the two guys who have played here. And, and when, he get, when he get vertical right away, you know, push him wide, yeah. just sit it down and yeah. just straight back. Yeah. Yeah. At a certain point, like, you go out there, you got to think, like, okay, I'm the man, you got to make this play. You're always learning, but while you're out there, you're learning on the go, but you're just playing. It's just instinct. While the players are buzzing around on the field, the kitchen staff is doing the same to make sure the team is well fueled. It's a beehive of continuous activity all throughout the day. Prep work starts going in about uh, two days ahead of time for each meal. The meats typically, you know, it's going to be 50, 60 pounds of each of the three proteins that we serve. We like to have two lean ones. Um, and sometimes we'll have like a higher fat one as well for the guys that need some more calories. Building a meal isn't just stacking chicken on a plate. It's all part of each player's customized plan to help maximize their performance on the field. When it's time to customize the plan, Coach Sean Snee and the strength and conditioning staff start with the basal metabolic rate. From there, the very simplified version of the formula works like this. Take the player's weight in kilograms and multiply it by a factor of 30, 35, or 40 based on their activity level for that day to calculate the total number of calories they need. They'll get those numbers, and then to correlate it with training table, they'll get a menu every morning. It'll have all the different foods on it, the calories, protein, carbs, fat, right? So that corresponds with the, menu, the meal plans that we give them. Guys will take a picture of what they have that day. They'll know, all right, I need 550 calories, however many grams of protein that is, carbs. And then when they're building their plates, we have another guy down there to help them build their plates. So we have the labels out for all the foods that we serve. It tells what the food is, what a serving size is, which is very important. Uh, and then we have the calories per serving and then the grams of protein, carbs, and fat. So now it's easier for them to shoot for what they're looking for. On top of that, we have a color coding system of uh, green, yellow, and red that kind of tells, uh, you know, the quality of the food. Not so much olive oil and vinegar. These guys, they want to be great. They're smart. Other uh, responsible guys. Gotta get your greens. We give them the information. We educate them. Know why they're doing what they're doing. And it, I mean, we can give them whatever we want, but it's up to them. Just looking at the body comp numbers, um, they're, I mean, they're trying to definitely trend in the right direction. And we had a couple guys up 12 pounds of lean mass just in the summer. The majority, I say, with at least two pounds up. Everything's about getting your body ready for the next practice, next competition, and uh, getting ready to go. Oh, 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 